does a cheap Turnigy 2040C 4S battery, 5,000 milliamp, keep up with a 6,000 milliamp 100C by Gen's Ace? Can it do it? Recently did this video with the X-Max, a stock one. Some of you guys pointed out that, you know, maybe it doesn't pull enough. So we're going to use the Creighton as an XLX2 with all the data logging. I'm going to show that to you real quick. We're going to get right out and see what these batteries have got. Take a look. Punch control 20%. I'm disable it for this test. Logging. We are going to clear that data log. Data log is empty. Five samples per second. What we're going to go for here is battery voltage, battery ripple, battery current. Uh, I could. I don't see where controller temperature is going to matter because I'm not running it long enough to really do anything there. And motor temperature. So those are what we're going to look at for this. Um, this is the setup right here. Get the XLX2 ESC. This is an 800 kV motor. It is geared with a 45 tooth pinion gear, 47 tooth spur gear. Here are the Turnigy batteries right here. They are fully balanced, charged, and ready to go. Here are the Gen Zakes. We didn't see much of a difference with the X Max. With the data logging on this, checking everything out, we will look at that when I get done with the actual drive. And uh, hopefully we'll see quite a bit of difference here. The punch control is turned off. The data log is completely cleared. So everything we're gonna see on the computer screen is fresh and new. Let's get this thing powered up and outside. So guys, this is gonna be a simple run. There's gonna be three full throttle launches with each set of batteries. And I'm gonna make about four or five speed runs all the way down here. We will check the speed. And then when I get done with this driving, we're gonna go back, look at that computer and get the data logs and see what we can see there. If just in case we don't see something right here, right now. I'm gonna make about four passes right down through here Nine point six miles per hour. One full throttle launch. The second time, I'm not lifting. Battery temps after that short run, just like about 104. The ambient temperature right now is about 89 degrees. First pull with the six thousands.
Got a little crash there, didn't I? Oh boy, let's see if it got my speed. All right, it did get my speed at 51. For this part of the test, unfortunately, I do have to use a different spot. Uh, as you guys saw, the first launch was good. The second launch was made basically just spinning. So I'm not sure what I can do here, but we're going to see what it's got. Go check out the uh, data logs. I'm gonna try to decipher this for you guys. So this was all done with the 5,000 milliamp. How to do all that at one run so everything was here. And this is all the 6,000 right here. So let's see what we've got here. Um, looking at the voltage right here is what we're looking at. Looks like the 5,000s pulled down as best I can tell in that bottom left corner, 28.6 is about what I can see as far as drop on the uh, 5,000s. Um, first, the first one, go away. Um, the first one here was actually a harder pull than the second one and the third one. Not sure why on that is why that is now with the 6,000. You can see it did not drop anywhere near as much. I mean, the most it did drop. Uh, let's see here. We are best I can tell in that bottom corner is like a 29.2 as far as the drop goes. So the 5,000 at this point right here did drop more like 0.6 volts. And here are the speed runs. Now you can see the voltage right here at 33.6. After the uh, launches, it was at 33.1. And then after the speed runs, we were at 31.7. Over here was 33.6. Right here was 33.1 and 32. So the uh, 6,000 milliamp is actually holding a little bit better. It really is on that. Now let's look at the ripple. All right, now we're looking at the bottom here. Um, looks like, yeah, you guys will have to look at this and you guys can tell me, but it looks, uh, let me see. It looks like there was a bit more ripple on the 5,000s right here on the straight runs because these right here were the uh, three launches again. And that was the straight speed runs and then the uh, little wheelie thing, the uh, little jump at the end right here. That didn't seem to be a factor in anything. Now we have current. It looks like um, I peaked at 280. Let me not move this back a little. 285 uh, maximum current out of the other ones. Uh, let me see here. I'm trying to get right on that and not having much luck, but this looks like about right at the 285 mark, but I can only get 180 to show, but you can look at the graph over here and see we're about at the uh, 280 mark or so all the way across. Um, looks like the uh, 6000s did give a little bit more amps. Um, really wish I knew a way to, you know, go one piece over. Yeah, I'm getting about 173 right there. So, all right, now how many watts? Looks like we maxed out at about 8,000 watts. Um, okay, now we're looking at, here's the 5,000s. See where they peaked out at. It's like about 200, well, let me see here. 6700 is about as best I can get over here I think is where we hit the highest uh, let me see if I can get that in there just right doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get it right where it needs to be 
but just by looking at the top here versus here, definitely got more wattage out of the 6,000s. Uh, temperature wise, um, this these were the first runs, so you can see the temperature coming up. It dropped a little bit during the battery swap and came on up again. Yeah, there wasn't enough run time to actually do anything. Okay, here's the amp hours. Um, yeah, you, uh, you guys tell me down below. Motor temperature. I don't think I even had that listed in there. Or it never made it up hot enough because really I didn't run it very much. So, looking at everything together. As far as the voltage, ripple, current, watts, and all that. Let's see here. Yeah, there you go. Everything seems to correlate. You hit it with a load, you get your amps and watts up, your voltage drops. So, I mean, I got to say, looking at the charts, I am not a pro at this at all. The uh, 6000s definitely was a little bit higher all the way across as far as less voltage drop, uh, amps, available amps was way up there on this one. You can see how high it is as opposed to these. So anyway, you guys that are really good at reading all this stuff, comment down below because I'm really interested in your opinion of what we're actually seeing here. So, all right, that was the data log. So guys, that drive actually showed a little bit of difference, but it was more evident on the uh, on the data logs. Um, as far as the drive goes, I mean, the 6000s by the data logs and by what I have experienced in the past, obviously, they run longer than the 5000s do. They just do. Now, the 5000s had more of a drop. Um, the overall amps, actually, I believe, was a little bit more for the 6000s. So... There is a benefit to the higher milliamp or higher C-rated batteries. So there was a benefit here. When I did it with the X-Max, you know, couldn't tell anything. I mean, I think I got a backflip with the 6,000s that I didn't get with the 5,000s. I could have hit it differently. You know, I might have hit a different spot, you know, and caught a little more rotation off the wall. That can happen very easily. So, but anyway, uh... Visually looking at it, not much of a difference. Not much of a difference at all. But 6000s did actually show that they were a little bit better on the uh, data logs. Now, guys, if you're a Castle Tech or something like that and you could see something, please comment down below. I'm really interested in how you guys interpret what we saw on the data logs. Was it a massive amount to you? Was it not even worth talking about? I'm really interested to learn about these things. That's something that I really need to know about. So guys, comment down below on that. Now, in the description, I will put links to both of these batteries and also everything on that Creighton. There's a whole bunch of stuff on there. They are affiliate links from Amain, eBay, Amazon, and Horizon. Make sure you guys check those out and use those links. It helps out the channel quite a bit when you guys do use the links and all that. Um, guys, so yeah, comment down below your thoughts on this test. Thank you all for watching. Guys, if you like what you see, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that bell. So, in the description, there's a link to become a channel member. If you want to become a channel member, it's a very simple $2, $5, $10, or if you really got some money, $25 a month. It's a simple way to support the channel. So, get that, and I am doing monthly giveaways for members only, so you might want to consider it. So, guys, use those links. Make sure you're subscribed. Thank you all for watching.